What's good? It's Wood. Boy, pretty uh, dark day or dark week in boxing overall, isn't it? Chris Eubank Jr. versus Conor Ben is postponed um, due to Conor Ben testing positive for what I understand and have read to be some, you know, pretty hardcore. A pretty hardcore PED, performance enhancing drug, uh, banned substance. It is um, something that he should not or no boxer should be entering the ring having tested positive for. And it's just a massive, massive disappointment. Like all the times I've been seeing the Eddie Hearn interviews, you know, kind of building this fight, talking about just massive, massive, you know, it was building up to be a pretty massive event, even if those in the know felt like it was a bit of a circus fight to begin with. Given the natural weight disparity, you've got one bigger fighter coming down an additional three pounds to meet at this 157 pound catch weight. Then you've got Connor Ben, a uh, welterweight, 147, coming up to fight a middleweight coming down to 157. So on the surface, it was just kind of a head scratching matchup, but it made sense because of their dad's. Uh, rivalry in 1990, having fought where, you know, uh, Chris Eubank Sr. knocked out Nigel Benn, taking his middleweight belt. That was in 1990. Then they rematched in 1993, fought to a, uh, a majority or split draw. And so that was the rivalry. So this was kind of the unfinished business to be had out uh, with the Suns. But weight-wise, it was never an, an appropriate fight. I mean, we were just thinking maybe it could be interesting. I mean, it would take a degradation performance-wise for Chris Eubank Jr. for that fight to even be interesting. Basically, he would have to be suffering from the weight drain because if, if Chris Eubank Jr. is operating like he normally does, he should beat the much smaller fighter. But we were still intrigued. If we didn't think, okay, this is the match that we want to see Chris Eubank Jr. in or this is not, you know, not the fight that we would want to see Conor Ben in given that he was just a surging prospect turned contender in the 147 pound division we didn't want to see either of these guys fight the other but here we had it and for the lightning in a bottle scenario context wise it made sense so Connor Ben I wake up you know in the morning I see the Michael Benson report like on Twitter that Connor Ben tests positive I'm like oh no and it's crazy because in in one bad test all of the good that and all the everything that was going on well in his career that caused him to be a surging name, right? It's it's all for naught now. And not not that he has to go back at square one and beat all the guys that he already beat, but reputation wise, this is immensely damaging. And you know, for a while, it was it looked like it was going to Match Room and Callie Sauerland, which is you know Chris Eubank Jr.'s promoter, that they were going to try to conspire to somehow pull this fight off and to make sure that it still happens, even if the British Board of Boxing was calling the fight off. And it was a VADA test, by the way. So you know, the promoters and everybody, they all paid the money to have this you know more stringent. You know, VADA has had the reputation of being more on point than USADA when it comes to you know testing for you know doping and such and, but it looked like the promoters were gonna still try to have this fight go on and you know Eddie Hearn basically said that in the day uh, of the revealed bad test and you know the day prior to the fight eventually being called off which you know they held a press conference you know a pretty short press conference to make the postponement of the fight official but at the end of the day, they did the right thing. And I, I was thinking like, damn, Eddie, damn Matchroom, Callie Sauerland, do you guys really want to suffer the blowback from having this, you know, super fight? Not because of the fighter's resumes, but because, again, of the context and the magnitude of the fight and what it means to British boxing. Super fight. To push this through, do you really want to suffer the blowback of basically jeopardizing just the integrity of the sport. And I know boxing is the last sport that you would point to and, you know, claim integrity, right? But if fighter safety matters, if PEDs and testing positive for any of that matters, if any shred of integrity that the sport still has matters, this fight should rightfully be postponed, right? There's no way that this should continue. And they eventually were either coerced or they, they eventually got to the right conclusion, which is this fight needs to be postponed, if not just outright canceled. But man, from a reputation standpoint, boy, does this do damage to Conor Ben. And, it, and it's weird. And, 
you know, justifiably or unjustifiably, you start to look deeper, right? You look at the guy's musculature. You look at the guy's, like, even his facial structure, and you start looking at everything. You look at his performance against Samuel Vargas, uh, Chris Algieri, Chris Van Heerden, and you, you look back at it, or Justice Koivula, and you say, hmm, hmm. You know, everything starts to come with some doubt. And it might not be fair, but that's just how it is when you test positive for a PED straight up. And yeah, Connor Ben was looking pretty damn jacked and just, just ripped like a bodybuilder, right? And he is fighting somebody much bigger than him. So, you know, do you just limit the criticism and scrutiny to what I what I, I assume he's eventually going to come out with statement-wise? Right now, he's saying, I'm a clean fighter. I'm a clean fighter. So if that B sample comes back and it's positive as well. And by the way, Eddie Hearn saying that there was no, like, due diligence or no. What did he say? Due process. That there wasn't due process in, you know, calling the fight off, you know, for the British Board of Boxing and basically just maintaining that you're innocent until proven guilty, right? So Conor Ben is saying, you know, I'm a clean fighter. Eddie Hearn is saying he wasn't given due process, all this stuff. Okay, we'll see what happens with the next sample. But if he did, in fact, cheat, straight up cheat, I assume that he's going to come out and say, this was my first time. And it was because, you know, I was fighting Goliath or, you know, whatever the case. But I ain't buying it. And I don't expect any, any of you to buy that. But I, I, I'm just guessing here. I think that's what PR wise, what you're going to try to push, the narrative that you're going to try to sell is that this is the first time and it was because of these outrageous circumstances of this, you know, catch weight fight, which I mean, you feel sorry for everybody not named Connor Ben involved who loses money here, right? Like Chris Eubank Jr. was doing everything, you know, to try to come down and make weight. And, you know, yes, he has been trolling the whole time. But, you know, I, I'm assuming he was doing his best to just get in the best shape possible, to lose as much weight as possible, and to make this fight happen. But all the other people who have jobs related to the economy of boxing and the economy of this massive event, they all lose in this case, right? So, you know, Conor Ben didn't just cheat the fighters out of the fight and cheat the promoters out, but he cheated the whole boxing economy that is playing some part of this boxing ecosystem. And that, that's just hugely unfortunate. And, you know, for those reasons, you might, as a fan, have wanted the fight to continue. But again, there, there's just no way to justify. I, I, economy aside, right? There's no way to justify for the health of the fighters that this fight proceed. But yeah, I assume that he's going to say, oh, it was just for this fight. But again, me as an unknowing fan, I can't believe any of that. Like, I, ha I have to look at everything with scrutiny. You know, I mean, when you, especially when you start talking, you know, musculature and just the way that he blew Samuel Vargas out and blew Chris Algieri out. Like these were, these were devastating knockouts and he was winning the fights up into the knockouts. Not like, I mean, with the Samuel Vargas one, it was almost as soon as the bell sounded, Samuel Vargas was in big trouble. Chris Algieri though, he was out boxing and then stopping, but you have to take everything into account now and just look, you know, basically do a double take on all the accomplishments, you know, in this still budding and still emerging career of Conor Ben. And yeah, it's just a total black eye in the game. But, you know, to the promoter's credit, to DAZN's credit, just the, the whoever had a, to the British Board of Boxing's credit, they called the fight off and, you know, Cooler heads prevailed. As much money that was at stake here, uh, it's the right thing to happen that this fight get postponed. But man, yes, this is a dark time in boxing with this particular story. And it's going to do a ton of damage control and a ton of rehabilitation for Conor Ben to ever be looked at. He, he might never be looked at like he was before this positive drug test. But just to get back on the bike and to get back on the horse, so to speak, and to have one clean performance after another, it's just going to be a long road to redemption. So we'll see how all of that plays out. But man, he just went from a very promising career where it's like, damn, how good can Conor Ben be to now you're a cheater, a bona fide cheater. 
and you've got to just somehow, somehow eventually make that right. But yeah, unfortunate that it happened. Unfortunate to everybody who loses money here. But fortunately, the fight was called off. And, you know, this is coming on the heels of like just the, you know, the Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford negotiation drama and fiasco. I, I still hope that that fight gets made. And, you know, there's becoming a, a, a greater magnifying gla glass or a, a lens of scrutiny at the way that PBC handles business, but that's a whole nother story for, I mean, I, I addressed it in the last live chat if you wanna give that a look, but in terms of Eubank versus Ben, fights off, we'll see whatever news breaks next related to the drug test or sample B and so forth. But yeah, let me know what you think about Eubank versus Ben, the positive test, you know, basically the immediate reaction where it kind of looked like Eddie Hearn and company were going to try to keep the train on the tracks. And look, I get it. I get it from a from a business standpoint, but there was just no ethical way to allow that to happen. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on all that. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are into the fight talk. I'm Wook. Thanks for tuning in.